say teeth fall like lightning I watch darkness run for cover Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Yes I do Lift up those hands in worship tonight.
forever, forever. That song moves me every single time. Thinking about how he took the price that I should have paid. I didn't even ask him to do it. He did it without me asking. Do you realize that you were born and that gift was right there for you? Here's eternal life. Eternal life. But we don't have to spend eternity in hell. He rescued us. He rescued us. Our God rescued us. He stepped in front of us and said, I'll take the bullet for you. He took the price. What a deep and loving relationship we get to be in. I thought about the scripture that said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. You are the joy. You get to be a part of this relationship. What a wonderful God we serve. He's so loving, he's so faithful, he's so kind. Let's just take another moment. Just lift your hands up to him. Just begin to pour out your love on him. Just begin to pour out your thanksgiving. Say, oh Jesus, oh Lord God, thank you. Thank you, oh Lord God, for saving me. Thank you, oh Lord God, for making a home for me in heaven. Thank you, oh Lord God, for letting me be a part of this loving relationship with you. You are worthy. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. You're so wonderful, Lord Jesus. Just turn your eyes to him right now. Lord, we look to you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord God. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and have your way. God, our hearts are open to you. God, we want to hear something new, something fresh. And God, we're so thankful to be in the house where we can worship you freely. God, that we could be around brothers and sisters, Lord God. We can share the love of God with each other. And so, God, we praise you, we worship you, we honor, we adore you. Why don't you just give him a shout and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to your brothers and sisters next to you and say, my God is good. Love on them, greet them, and you can have a seat. Hallelujah. traffic. You are here in the house of God. And I'm going to tell you, God honors you for making the effort, making the sacrifice. As you come in to seek his face, he's going to be here to meet you. Do you believe that? 
Hallelujah. If you don't know who I am, my name is Grace Houghton. I am the worship and arts director here at World Harvest Church. Also the youngest child of Pastors Merrick and Linda Houghton. Woo, that worship was just so wonderful. Thank you, worship team, so much. Thank you, production team, those who you cannot see, the camera people, those in the back, those up above. They, can you get the production team a hand? They do such a great job. If you ever see a camera person roaming around, just, just give them a, a shake of a hand and say thank you so much because they get to make a way for those who are watching online at home. They can come and see. But today, I'm announcing that we have the Forever Free class starts tomorrow. You can still sign up if you pull up your Church Center app. You can go to signups, go to Forever Free. If you missed, I shared my testimony on Sunday morning about how when I went through Forever Free, God set me free from depression, suicidal thoughts, nightmares. I can, I'm a living testimony of this class. It's basically digging into the Word of God to show you how you can live free in every area of your life. Because the devil tries to hide and be deceitful and say that he's not there. But this just exposes him in all areas. So sign up. You can still get a chance to show up to her tomorrow. We also have the World Harvest Bible Institute every single month. You can sign up for the class. It starts May 19th to the 21st. Also sign up on the Church Center app. This month is homiletics, learning to present the gospel message effectively. And this could be for anybody you don't have to feel like you're called to be a preacher on the stage, but everyone needs to be able to preach their message wherever they go. Amen? Amen. Then we also have revival coming up at the end of the month. Dr. John Avanzini is coming on Sunday, May 22nd, morning service and evening service. And then right after that, Dr. Jerry Savelle is coming back for three nights straight. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, you don't want to miss it. It was such a supernatural thing the last time he was here. And he said that he kind of invited himself. Pastor Merrick said, please invite yourself. That'd be great. And so it's going to be a supernatural time. You don't want to miss it. Also, for those who are graduating, or if you have a student who is graduating high school or college, please help them to sign up on the church center so we can know to contact them. They're going to be walking here during the morning service on Sunday, May 29th, so we can honor them. Amen? Amen. And then a last minute announcement that I throw in, the Alabama mission trip got rescheduled from May 13th to the 15th. It is now May 20th through the 22nd. I see Pastor Merrick's coming. Because Alabama, I love Alabama. They have an antique show. It's, I never heard of such a thing. It's an antique show on Highway 11. It goes all the way through Alabama and Mississippi for three days. Everybody shows up and they all put their stuff on the, on the side of their stores, streets, and it's like, I guess the world shows up for this. And so we were shut down by an antique show, which they had forgotten about. And we said, no, this is a great flip. Thousands are there. But, but the, Fort Payne, the Fort Payne, Alabama people said, no, that's overloading us. And so we, we want to be a focus on our people. So we're going to do it the week after, in Jesus' name. That's going to throw a monkey wrench in people's works. But uh, I love Alabama. They have different things. Uh, but if you want to buy an antique, <laughs> head on down next weekend, all the way along Highway 11. I said, has anybody ever heard of that? Oh, look at, look at this, man. I'm come. Okay, did I cut you off? Yeah, and say right there a minute. Um, the Bible school, this, uh, uh, you're going to love this next class. If you even are on the Bible school, it talks about law, teaching how to preach on your feet. And the Keys to Better Preaching by John Garlock. John Garlock is one of my favorite. He's the son. His dad was also a Garlock who wrote the book, Before We Kill and Eat You. And uh, it was about his time when he was in Liberia, and captured by a bunch of natives. And they literally had a big old pot, and they were going to kill him and, because they're cannibals back then. They're, you know, there's cannibals all over the world. What's a cannibal? Someone who eats another human. And uh, we have that still going on here. It's called gossip. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> dish, okay. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, but he wrote that book. That was his dad. So it's just a powerful book. It's the one they use in Rama. 
But you should learn how to present the gospel in a clear, succinct way. And we're here to empower you to be impactful for the, for the world out there. Amen? Amen. And then, uh, Grace, you got something else? That's the end of my announcements. That's the end of your announcements. Well, you know, I was in another church. I was in West Virginia for a few days in that church. And then I was in a, a church in the middle of Maine. Has anybody been to Maine? Amazing place. Um, amazing place. I wasn't used to, you know, you preach this big crowd of people. And um, they remind me of the people when I preached in Berlin, Germany. And they all sat there. And no matter how much you jumped or shouted, it was the same. So I said, I think I bombed. No, no one moved a muscle or flipped or did anything. And they said, no, you were a great success. I said, how was that? Did you see some of them lean forward? <laughs> and I'm used to banner, amen, hallelujah, it's nothing. <laughs> but it was a good time. I mean, God blessed us. But I want to thank God for all. It's just good to be back. I just want you to know this. I mean, I love different cultures. <laughs> And I, love, and I love what they're doing. It's a big church. They're doing a great work all over Maine. And uh, I didn't know this, but Maine, they don't take anybody. There's no racial overtones. But I'm sharing this. Don't flip out. But it's the whitest <laughs> state in the union. I didn't know that. Of a church that big, everyone was white. I felt odd. I felt out of place. I kept looking for someone of color. Somebody has got to, one person, give me at least one that snuck in here, maybe. <laughs> but uh, everyone has their, their territory to win for Christ. Amen? Amen? And I'm just glad I'm, this God assigned me this territory. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. This is where we shake a leg for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Did you have something else to say? Oh, you're doing the offering, yeah. right? Oh, I was just ad well, Also, he did interrupt me. I forgot. I didn't finish my announcement about Alabama. The new dates are May 20th through the 22nd. If you are interested in attending, please contact Navita by emailing missions at whcga.com. That just means he, miss, he misses you all. He misses you guys. He just wants FaceTime with you all. That means you have, a, you have a pastor that genuinely loves you. He really does. He loves this church. And we love you, Pastor Merrick. Yes, we missed you. But did Pastor Linda do a great job on Sunday morning? And we were saying she caught the spirit of Pastor Merrick first service, if anyone... <laughs> We went as long as Pastor Merrick would have gone. But it was a good message. It was powerful. If you haven't listened to it, go online on YouTube and listen to it. It was all about God's mercy. And whew, it was just really good. Um, but we are going to be um, receiving tithes and offerings this evening. And tonight I wanted to go look at Philippians 4, verses 15 through 19. I read the New Living Translation. And I have my phone. I know young people. But this is Paul speaking to um, the Philippians. He says, I believe they have it up there. As you know, ah, nice, good job, guys. You Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. I kind of liked how Paul singled out this church in the, um, of the Philippians. He said, no other church did this. He recognized this church gave financially. I want to say, I know this church is a church just like this one, that we give financially to help other missionaries. We help other churches in this area. We help families. This is a giving church, and it only can happen because of the giving people who are a part of this church. Amen? And verse 16 says, even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. And this is just Paul speaking. Just think about the heart of God. God wants to reward you. He recognizes when you give a financial gift to be kind to other people. Verse 18, at the moment, I have all I need and more. 
I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. I want you to know that your gift is a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Every time you give, God sees it. It's acceptable to him. It's pleasing to him. You please the heart of God, and he wants to reward you for that. Verse 19, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. And this is a verse that you hear quoted a lot, but if you read all the way above there, he's talking about people who are giving sacrificially, who are looking to the needs of others. And he's saying you will be rewarded for that. It's a conditional promise. God, God will supply all of your needs, but just if you have needs that haven't been met yet, like, okay, whose need can I meet now? Who can I be kind to? Because I know God will reward me for my kindness in my financial giving. Finances are important to God because it's connected to your heart. But when you continue to do that, because he said that, he, that they gave financially many times, many times, and that all of their needs will be supplied and, and met. And I can testify that God has taken care of me because I have had a wonderful church with great pastors and teachers that have taught me from a young age. To be sure to teach your young kids because they understand and they get it that 10% of what you receive, you give to God. You give it to the church. And that's just been ingrained in me and that I do that. And I'm able to give more than I can even think that I could because it's by faith. You know when you get that giving statement at the end of the year? It's like, what? I was able to give that much? No, because it's, it's God. He, he provides seed for you, but then I have no lack. God provides for me. I have everything that I need, and I know moving forward, anytime I need something, I'll be like, uh, God, um, you will re- reward those people who give. I need a reward right now. God, I, I have a need. You present that need to him, and you take that scripture, use your faith, and you say you present it to God and say, hey, God, you said that this same God who took care of Paul is going to take care of me and will supply all of my needs from your glorious riches. God has no lack. God has zero lack. He can bring money to you in all ways, shapes, or form, and to make sure you just present your case unto the Lord, but also make sure you have seed in the ground. So this is an opportunity for you to plant your seed. And I'm so glad we're in a church that doesn't shy away from this. Because there are churches that don't even, they just kind of gloss over it. But there are people, they have needs, but they don't receive the truth and know the principles of the word. That if you need something to be met in your life, you got to sow a seed first. It's a principle in the word. You can't bypass it. You can't shake it. But I know this is a giving church. This is a faith-filled church, and this is going to be an opportunity for you to give. And so you can give online. You can do text to give. They're going to show you the information on the screen. You can go on the app. There's plenty of ways to give. If you want to come forward, bring your offering to the altar. I know some of you bring your phones to the altar. You can do that. Just, it's like an act of faith, like you're bringing your offering to the Lord. And so I'm going to let you take an opportunity to do that as they play some music. Bring forward, and we'll pray afterwards. Amen.
Lord Jesus, and this is a spiritual thing that's taking place right here. Every time you bring your offering unto the Lord, just make sure you engage your faith, engage your spirit, because God watches it. Just like Jesus watched the widow who gave her two mites, Jesus watched her, took note of it, and he said, that woman right there gave more than everybody else. He looks at your faith as you give. So thank you, these wonderful ushers here. Let's reach our hands out and pray for these gifts. God, we just thank you, Lord, that your word says this is a sweet and pleasing aroma to you. Lord God, this is an acceptable gift. And God, I just thank you, Lord, that you take note of the faith, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, you take note of the seed that's being planted here. And God, we thank you, Lord, for this provision so that we can be a blessing to others, not only in, in this house and around this house, but around the world. And I just thank you, Lord God, that as those who have given, Lord, that much will be given back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it to give you all the glory. And if you agree, say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Pastor Merrick, come on up. My heart is for those right now. Uh, Brother Jerry Savell said, you know, you have to have faith that God's have an open hand regardless of what happens out there. And there's some challenges out there. Rent, mortgaging, I mean, there's, there's just so many things. So we've got the inflation. You've got many things that are coming at the body of Christ or the people in general. And I, I just want to let you know that we are not blind to that. We want to mix our faith with yours and in the month of May, we're going to have special times of fasting and prayer. But I want to believe God for the financial breakthrough Amen. for people in Jesus' name. Amen. I've got a great testimony on Sunday of a, first, of, of a resurrection seed offering. We're looking for a house, and they got a house supernaturally. And I'm believing it's going to <clears throat> stir your faith up. <clears throat> I went to the point where I want to get some business people. I said, listen, let's buy some land, and we'll sell lots to our people. We'll, we'll, we'll build our own houses in Jesus' name. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's just um, knock it in the head with the power that we have financially as a as a group. But I, I, I just want you to know I'm not uh, I'm not uh, I'm not blind to what people are facing. It's very real, and uh, I'm believing God in Jesus' name for this house to receive the blessing, supernatural blessing. And I believe the prophet of God that said, "If you will not get afraid of what's out there, but let's believe for that open hand of of favor in Jesus' name." I could look, under, I don't have to have it, but if you put up your hand, you'd say to me, you know, Pastor, I'm looking for a new income. I'm looking for a new position. I'm looking for an increase. I'm looking for, you know, there's certain things you're looking for. I'm looking for a house. Like how many people even go for a house? Let me just see your hand for this. That's a number of people. It's about a third or a fourth of the people. We're, let's believe God for that. As a people, we're going to make a pull on heaven, a demand on heaven in Jesus' name. And so I just feel like prophesying this over you. In the name of Jesus, we bind every devil assigned to withhold the blessing of God over every child of God in this house. And in the name of Jesus, we say, go, ministering spirits, go and cause the favor to come, the supernatural open doors, and that, Lord, that, Lord, that you will do something that's moving outside the ordinary. It is supernatural to cause the jobs to come, the interviews to come, the, the hiring to come. Lord, and that in Jesus' name, there shall be a blessing on your people. Houses, we call them in to the body of Christ. Your people will be, have no lack in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. I've been talking to Renee Van Roy. We need to go to our representatives and our senators of the state. But they need to put a hold on what investors can do to buy up all the properties of houses. They said, no, you can only do, you know, you're, you're limited. You can't snatch up every house just because you're Mr. Big Bucks out of another state. Amen. And so I'm going to write my own. I'm calling some people that I know. Listen, you need to put a, it needs to be a governor. Amen? And say, no, you just can't do that because it's not good for the people of Georgia. Of some outside source just come along. And, uh, you know, God is, I, I want to let a little teaching here on freedom. The basis of our freedom is land ownership. Did you know that? The foundation of your freedom is that you own property. And it, the devil wants to push it so you have to rent, rent. I'm telling you, that's not, the, that's not freedom. When people come against you owning land, they come against freedom of this nation. 
That's why socialism is not good because it wants to make everything uh, a part of, we're all part of this happy family. No, there's no such thing as a happy family outside of you owning land. And where God set it up in the Old Testament, the whole deal about every seven years you cancel debt, every 50 years a complete eradication of any kind of, um, any kind of indenture to anybody else, whether it's the slavery or your properties. God had it set. There's a reset. So not one entity could rise up and take over the economy. You know what I'm saying? So God under, understands. You could just get it so people, it gets out of whack. You need a reset. I'm a firm believer in that. So we're going to believe God. And some of you who know political people, I'm going to make some calls. I really am. But Georgia cannot be, you can't be sucking up everything that's out there. Amen? But God can move through real estate agents and God can move through owners and God can move through, I mean, I've had this happen several times. Um, um, Todd Holmes was here. He said that there's a whole plethora of buyers for this home, but they want it. But they got to talk to the owner. And the owner's calling back. They said, we don't talk to you. Something about us that's inside of us says that we forget all the other buyers. We just need to give it to you. And even people with, you know, the old cash, we'll buy cash. And there's going to be more. But we'll take less on terms because we feel like it's you. Isn't that good? So, amen, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is our time for faith. We're going to be teaching faith coming up and get our faith stirred up. But I want to go back to Hebrews 6. I want to finish off what we're sharing. And uh, if you remember this, I was back in Hebrews 6 some weeks ago. And it talks about the fundamental principles of God. Just the first two verses. It says, therefore, leaving the leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. What's that? Maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of the resurrection of, of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Now, Father, I ask you for the help of the Holy Spirit to make alive your word in Jesus' mighty name, Holy Ghost. Thank you for your help even this night in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. I love that you could almost make it a seventh principle out of the six that are here. And that principle is let us go on to perfection. You know what God's saying? Don't get stuck. Grow up. Don't get stuck in a, in, in a rut. God wants us to grow. Say, God wants me to grow. And, and for you to grow, you've got to stay in an environment. Say, I want to grow. I want to stretch. I don't want to stay the same old, same old. I was sharing la on that night. They had me preach twice in that second uh, service. I just preached on the fact that because they're an old-time Pentecostal church, and sometimes old-time Pentecost people rest on their laurels. I'm all, I've been in a way. I know about this. I know about that. But they get capped, and they get tapped, and they get stuck in a rut where they think like, well, I've arrived. And they put everything on cruise, the most dangerous thing. And I was just sharing how that whatever you have of God is still a tiny piece of what God has for you. And it would take all of eternity to God to reveal the love he shared for us through Jesus Christ. And so you got to stay this thing. you got to have this in your heart. I'm going to grow. Everybody say, I'm going to grow. Like, Margie, where are you here? Where'd you, where'd you go? I'm so proud of you. Just, just run up here real quick. I want to interrupt this. And, and someone give that mic real quick. This is Samara's daughter, and uh, but she just is back from one term. Was it one year or one semester? Uh, one year. Was semester. one year. Where were you? RSM, Ramp School of Ministry. It's, it's, uh, the short name is Ramp, right? Yes. And it's headed up by uh, um, uh, Amazon, Karen Alabama. Wheaton. Yeah. And it's in Alabama. See, they're good things in Alabama. And so there's, <laughs> I was just joking. You're from Alabama. We love Alabama. But literally, I remember you going to this school, and you had just made the turn for Jesus and leaving the temptations that the world was offering you. But you were there like, it's intense. What do you do there? Um, every single week from Monday through Thursday, we have 8 a.m. morning prayer, like every single day. And we have 
two classes from 8 to 12 on, like, honor, um, the New Testament, Old Testament, and just, like, different classes. And then we have a chapel, so it's, like, the students there, they held chapel on every single Wednesday. And uh, we have conferences that Miss Karen, that she holds. Karen, we, yeah. Yeah, and we have Reese Hop Prayer every Thursday from 9 to 11 or 9 to whenever it ends and stuff like that. And we just At go At night? Out. It sounds like all you do is pray, worship, hear the word, and serve. Yeah, and um, also just honor each other in the community, honor our leaders constantly. So, so you're just saturated with the word and prayer. Mm-hmm. Did you all get that? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm so proud of her. And she's going again. Is this right? Yeah, I'm going again for my second year in August. Second year. Would you recommend this to young people? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, I didn't, I didn't go to college. I mean, honestly, if I would have went to college the way I was when I left, I honestly would have just fallen off track and probably would have stopped coming to church. You know what? She said a mouthful, but it's the truth. Can I say this? You're an example to many. I said, people, take a leap year. Take two leap years before you go to school. Get loaded for bear. When you hit the campus, you got, man, you got two six guns. You're ready to blast every devil right out back to hell. Amen. That's, that's the attitude. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here to take over. Yeah. Amen. Bless you. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. Father, continue the work on my sister's life. Yes. Let that anointing grow. Let it be an example to others that you can rise up from the world's morass of confusion and become mighty in the spirit for God. Give her the, we just give her a blessing, Lord. Give her grace to all she's done that she will continue to grow. Amen. We're proud of you. I, I want you to get, a, you know, just let her know how proud you are of her and just encourage her. But this is needed. The reason I want to tie that in there because she's growing. She's growing. We got to grow. I say grow up. Man, we got to grow up. We can't stay in babyhood. Dear Lord, it's got to be coming. We got to become men and women of God. Men and women of God in our attitudes towards life and the way we handle one another. and In Jesus' name, refuse to get offended. You will not be touchy. You will not allow your skin to be wafer thin. You can have the skin of a crocodile. You're just going to go forward because you know what God has for you. This is what God's saying. And these are six principles you've got to get laid down to be strong, to grow a mighty uh, building for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, um, you cannot inherit your full inheritance without getting these foundations. Because all of these set up your attitude. And it just was refreshing to me to reread or to restudy and to teach the whole thing about the laying on of hands. And how important that is. The laying on of hands to impart a blessing. To release the healing power of God. To release, you know, the inheritance that God has for you. And I, I tell you, there's so much great things in these foundational scriptures, which if I had to review, remember number one is repentance of dead works. Repentance, we talked about what that means. It's a change of mind. It's a turnaround from where you were going. It's a 180. And it's repentance from dead works. Anything that's outside of Jesus Christ, you leaning your life upon Jesus, is a dead work. Jesus is the only way you get out of the mess you're in putting your faith in him. He's the one who paid every penalty of your sins. And anything else you try to add on is a dead work. Amen. Amen. Including foods. Some people get into dead works on foods. And uh, I am not (laughs) me eating barbecue pork or not eating is not a determination of my walk with God in Jesus' name. But people look at it, that's, that to me is a dead work. I'm saved. I'm, uh, no pig saved me. Jesus saved me. And that because I eat a pig, it's not going to stop me from walking with God. But people put dead. If, I, I promise you, if you walk around the world and you see what I see, there's, it's full of dead works. People are into dead works. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. It's got to be just that way. 
in Jesus' name. No, that's called repentance from dead works. And then he said, faith towards God. And there's no other way to God except through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the end result of everything that we, that, that, that we stand for. It's all about Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. The more we get of Jesus in us and just our dependence is on him and him alone. Then we talked about the doctrine of baptisms. There are three baptisms. When you're born again, one is essential. The baptism of the body of Christ. If you're not baptized in the body of Christ, you lose. And the second baptisms are really, they're optional, but they're important. You have to obey them in order to get what you need from heaven. The water baptism, which we're having, I think, next week. Next week. And then, um, uh, then we have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I was talking to a man today from another church, and they're good people. And they're, we're doing about missions. And I just said, you know, well, are you baptized? Yes, we are. I asked the other guy, well, are you? Well, now, it's, um, it, as soon as you go, well, now, you're not. So it, <laughs> I just said, you know what? In, in this school that we have and all of our ministry, we're about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'll be honest with you, I love you, but I don't have time to waste. Uh, if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost and you want me to do missions, I mean, that's like, that's like having a car with a 40-horsepower motor. I mean, it just, there's nothing aggravates me more if my assistant books me a car with a sewing, en sewing machine engine. It's just... You know, I'm going. I'm attending a three-day faith conference. I just there's no faith in the car. <laughs> I feel like I have to open the door seriously and put my foot on the pavement, help it along, just to be sure it gets a little more momentum. Lord, uh, now be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's not enough time. And I told these people, they're from the evangelical camp. I said, listen, you were one time the top dog, but you're not anymore. The Holy Ghost has taken over. There are more Holy Ghost tongue-talking Christians. I think the figure is close to 800 million around the world. We are, no, it's just a miracle of God. And this has happened since 1970. So last 50 years, boom, Holy Ghost. And I got no time. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, we love you. But I'm not pussyfooting around and trying to be polite around you. I'm just marching forward. Now, if I run over you, I'm sorry. But the Word of God is the absolute truth. I ain't got time to play. Amen. And just, you know, if you want to charge hell with a BB gun, help yourself. But I like AK-47s. So I'm going to use every ounce of power we got. I'm using it for the glory of God. I'm not apologizing for it. I mean, time's too short. What tickled me, I had Pastor Oscar Wicks. We were kind of, we were in this meeting, and he was on. <laughs> and he starts sharing his testimony. I said, my God, he's got my spirit, man. He's just got, man, we don't, when we go to Guatemala, we don't put up with this poverty. We don't put up another, we tell it like it is. And we're not watering it down to please religious spirits in Guatemala. I said, go, Pastor Oscar, go. Hallelujah. I just want to uh, recognize uh, Brother Sean. Evangelist, why don't you stand up, Brother Sean? He's from now don't, he's, he's, he is from, he's nearly Alabama, not quite. He's Columbus, Georgia, but he has a tremendous ministry to Fort Benning, and literally uh, thousands have come to Christ. He has these meetings on a weekly basis. Give him a hand. We appreciate you, Brother Sean. He's awesome. God has a special hand on him. And so we talked about the, the laying of hands to impart, how you, laying of hands imparts, um, it's such an important doctrine. We can't, we can't say enough about it. And then last week, last time I talked about the resurrection of the dead and how that when we're raptured, we'll be resurrected from the dead. Uh, like the dead will be resurrected. Those who are alive will be changed. I want this. Can you imagine never being in a coffin <laughs> or an urn? <laughs> just and really there's another rapture because it talks about it. I didn't mention it the last time but there's a rapture of during the seven years of, of tribulation there are saints that die during that time that die but when Jesus returns this uh, coming down at the end of the seven years there is a resurrection of all those saints 
And then finally, there's the third resurrection, the final one, is at the end of the millennial reign, everybody is brought out of hell and they're resurrected. That's called uh, when they die again, it's the second death. They died once, went to hell. Then they're resurrected. Can you, you know, and they'll be resurrected, but they'll be sent to the lake of fire. But resurrection is part of the kingdom of God, is part of our inheritance. There are resurrections for the people of God, and we should, I don't know about you, because I know I'm being resurrected, it puts a great joy in your life to realize the older you get, it doesn't matter. Cecilia, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're getting a new body. Come on, man. We just, you know, uh, and you just keep pushing and running and going. In Jesus' name, I believe God will give you divine energy if you work for God. I believe it. He'll give you divine energy. He'll, he, will, he, will, he will help you in Jesus' name. But now I want to talk about this uh, eternal judgment. It sounds like a heavy subject. Eternal judgment. But I want to say this. I think of all of them, this hits me the most and inspires me the greatest because of eternal judgment. I just realized there's a Dalton there and a Dalton there. Bookends to the body of Christ. We love you both and we bless you in Jesus' name. Give them a hand, the Daltons. They're just uh, major on serving in the name of Jesus. Eternal judgment. Eternal, eternal judgment simply means that uh, there's coming and accountability to every human being on earth. And that's what the beginning of the fear of the Lord is. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord means simply that I will one day give an answer to my life. If you don't have any fear of God, you don't really care what you do to other human beings, what you say, how you live your life, because you somehow believe that you're not accountable to anybody. But the Bible teaches you are accountable to God. And God watches everything. God sees everything. And God writes things down. It's amazing in the book of, as modern as we are, in the book of Revelation, it didn't say he scrolled through computers. He said he looked through a book. <laughs> I got great solace from that, that there's a book. We don't have iPads in heaven. The Bible says you got books. This runs without any kind of power. I can flip it open at any time. That's why the iPad, I might get to the iPad, but always my worst fear is I'd turn the dumb thing on as something screwed up. Then all my notes are in there, <laughs> aggravating thing. And so, um, but everyone, but everyone needs to understand this foundation, which is eternal judgment, eternal judgment. I want to talk about it. And I want to go to uh, a great scripture, which is found in Revelations 20, talking about the great white throne of judgment. And let's go verse 11. It says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, and from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Now get this. And the books were opened. Selah. <laughs> and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they would judge each one according to his works. Then death and Hades, or hell, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, I have some good news for you. If you're a born-again believer, the great right throne of judgment is not for you. Everybody say hallelujah for that. <laughs> Woo, Lord. If you are standing behind the great white throne of judgment, you know you just missed it. But they're going to stand there, the whole earth. Think about this. Everyone who's ever lived on the planet, starting from Adam to the day that, with the end of the millennial reign, this comes after 1,000 years. Everyone who's ever died is resurrected. They, the unsaved stand before the great white throne of judgment. 
and they'll be judged. Everyone. Now, the, this is amazing to me that the books are opened up. And someone has to have written something about you in a book. Someone is keeping records. And then there's this book of life. We had the glory and the fire play here. There was a big scene. You know, is my name in the book of life? And the guy would say, the angel would go, finally, look, look. He said, no. Where do I go then? Remember that? The shift would change. The demon would come flying out. Kids would scream <laughs> because it was so real. Uh, but it's the absolute truth, the book of life, that God has a registry of every human being ever born. And he looks down this book. If your name is not in the book, you will die again. I have no greater motivation to see people come to Christ than I don't want anybody to be cast in the lake of fire. But everybody's name is listed in the book. It's amazing how the Lord in the book of Revelation says, I'll not blot your name out. Meaning that when you're born, your name's in the book of life. Born naturally. So you have to have your name blotted out. You've got to reject the one who wants to love you and bring it to, you to, to God, Jesus. So God's a positive God. I'm believing you're going to make it. Put, put your name there. But it could be blotted out. But these, are, these truths um, are the foundation for our Christian faith when we realize that there's accountability. Every human being. President Putin, you're accountable. Hitler, you're accountable. Everything you've done, or of course, have happened, it's written down. God's keeping records. And if you ever think, you know, if you know anything about hell, if you go read the book on Mary Baxter's book on hell for 21 days, you know, just go read it. You'll see that hell has different levels. And you're punished differently depending on how bad you were on this earth. They keep records. Now, when I know they're keeping records, if he keeps records for those who are the unsaved, now you know he's keeping records on you. I remember one time a, a preacher saying he saw a vision of angels in a church. They each had tablets with styles, and they were recording people's offerings. Like every offering given, okay, so-and-so gave so much. Like you think about it, if, if we keep records of your offering, don't you think God does? And God knows what's going on. If, so it's, a good, it's good to get a hold of the fact that God knows all about you and you're on, you know, forget NSA. God's another level. He really is. But if you love God, it's a good thing. But uh, I want to do this too. I want to be of an, of an encouragement to you. But just know that you're not found in this place, if you're a saint. Everybody said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. But, but there is a judgment seat of Christ. The great white throne of judgment is for the sinner and for the lost. But the judgment seat of Christ is for the believer. The judgment seat. And so, how do they compare? Well, one, the first one, the great white throne, is judgment for evil sins, and there is punishment. The great white throne, that's that category. But the judgment seat of Christ is not for punishment. It's for reward. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you can, but there's a lot of people that will scare people in their preaching saying, I'll tell you. If you, you know, your sins are going to find you out if you get before the mighty great white throne of judgment. And they go on and on about it, like, oh, my goodness. No, if you're born again, the Bible says that your sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. First John 1, 9 says that he forgives us of our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Romans 8, 1 says there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So don't you know that you don't have to stand before the great white throne of judgment? Don't let any preacher scare you with a false doctrine. But there is this. This judging of saints, 
When does it occur? Well, the seven years of rapture, two things happen up in heaven. Number one, marriage supper of the Lamb. Number two is the judgment seat of Christ. Exactly where that fits for the judgment seat, I'm not sure, but I do know this, that it says we will all appear, talking about believers, before that, that judgment seat. And if you look at the word judgment, which I looked up today in the Vines Expository Dictionary, it's the word bema, B-E-M-A. Bema. And it simply means a place of, they, uh, in the Greeks would use it, uh, uh, they, it like, like right now where I'm standing, they would call this a bema because it's elevated and you can see me better, a bema. If, if a judge, if a, uh, I mean, uh, 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 someone watching a race, if they stood up a little bit higher, two, three steps, and they awarded a runner or whatever athlete a prize for winning a race, that was considered a bema. So when we think of judgment, it has a strong connotation. I'm being judged for something wrong. When really it's, when you use the word bema, it's something of a recognition of what you've accomplished. And so it takes the sting out. Amen? But it has some other things to say about us um, because the judgment seat of Christ is really, when we receive Christ, let me see if I can get a show of hands. How, how many have been saved uh, five years? Like you've been saved, you've been born again for at least five years. Uh, Ten years. Twenty years. People just not put their hand up. Okay. <laughs> 30 years. Well, look at these. 40 years. Man, you got some hands up. Wow, look at that. That's pretty good. You were saved a long time. Some people, I could go on and on, but I don't want to stop. But we each got different, you know, in our, in our journey, after you got saved and the years clicked by, the judgment seat is for God to review what you did for him after you were saved. It really comes down to this, obedience. When you got saved, there's a little bit of, how should I put this, reverence for the fact that your life will be reviewed. It'll be assessed. It'll be evaluated to determine did you live a life that was obedient to Christ? Because he has a reward to give you. Sometimes we don't hear, to hear about that enough, but he has a reward. And you say, what is the reward? I don't know. There are five crowns mentioned in the New Testament. It talks about a crown, crown of righteousness, crown of life. There's a soul winner's crown, crown of rejoicing. The soul winners get to rejoice. I think they'll laugh and be happier than anybody else in heaven. People want to hang out in the soul winner's mansion because it's, it's, that's where the fun is. But, but God has rewards. And sometimes we, we don't think about it. But that's why I need this doctrine of eternal judgment. You've got to have it in our spirit because God is into what you do impacts how you live over there. And he's going to pass out responsibilities. Because the first thing you do is a thousand year of of reigning on earth. So he's needing someone to rule and reign on earth for a thousand years. And then after that, there's something else. So basically, God looks at your service, judges what you did, and based on how you did, you get promoted. Does that excite you? So it's all about, don't ever take the shirt off, get to get, because it's all about what you're doing for God. We're not saved by what we do. We're saved by grace and grace alone. But it's like the way you live here will qualify how you live there. You got to get that. Now, figure this is a short life compared to, you know, if you live 70, 80, 90 years, that's still short compared to 1,000. And 1,000 is very short compared to eternity. So it behooves us 
to live for eternity. The whole thing about eternal judgment is that pay attention. Don't live for this earth. Live for where you're going. The fool lives for this earth. They have their goals and significance about what this earth can provide. Well, I've gained so much money. Well, I've gained, I've gained great greatness. It says in the book of Revelation 20, it says the great and small. That means everybody. Great. They were great because they get a name. They got some money. They got some fame. They got some whatever, no, notoriety. But really, at the great white throne of judgment, it's a great equalizer. It's, what does it matter? You have to think that way. What does it matter? When I see the deals, you know, the deals that was um, Jake and uh, Chelsea, but they were, they were here. They're a young couple, and they're going to Vietnam. Well, guess what? They made it. And uh, they're in Vietnam. Praise the Lord. And they're right there. Now, here they're young. They got their kids, and, and uh, man, they're so winning right now. Man, they had this huge nursing home and preached the gospel because the Christians that somehow founded are running it, and even though it's a communistic, anti-God government, they allow Christians in there because they see what the good is doing and, the, you know, the healing power for their loved ones, and so they just let you do it. In that, they just look the other way. We don't want to see. Isn't that wonderful? So they're there, and I thought about it. They're a young couple investing their lives. Then we had another young man. He was out in uh, Zanzibar. As we speak. You think about why would I want to invest my life where I could be in corporate gaining money and stacking up my 401k? That's how the world lives. Then, you know, we're just going to live out there because we've got one life to live and we're going to sow it. And whether it's in a mission field, the main thing is you've got to follow out what, what God told you to do. And to do that, you can't make rash decisions. You've got to be a person of prayer. You've got to wait on God. You can't just be just zigzagging through life. I like I, when people, I'm going to give you a little clue. You watch someone who's always making a 90 degree change. They're going here, eh, now they're doing this. Now they're doing this. And it's like, God doesn't zigzag. God's more like a, he flows. And he speaks and he has a calling to you about what you need to do. And there's a flow to it. Is everybody still out there? And so we want to look at, um, uh, at Romans 14. So the main thing I'm talking about, no one has to shrink at the, the great, at, the, at the judgment seat of Christ. You're not shrinking. Oh, my goodness. No, you can stand tall because God's already washed you in his blood, and you're just receiving an assessment. So let's verse 10. It says, why do you judge your brothers, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand. It didn't say we'll all crawl or lay down in shame. We'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. That's pretty strong, isn't it? We will each give an account, a place of evaluation, a place of designation. And uh, the Bible says we're all in a spiritual race. Run this race to win. Paul says not all win, but run for that prize. Run. Put aside every weight, every sin, everything that slows you down for the call of God upon your life is the most important call of all. And it can be a call in business. You can be in business and make money. I was at the church in the middle. You have to understand something. This church is like over 1,000, 1,200 members in the middle of Maine in a town of Charleston whose population is 1,200. So people drive an average hour, hour and a half away from all points of the compass to come there because there are very few watering holes. But in that place, the church has not a millionaire, a billionaire. It's nice to have a billionaire in your church, you know. <laughs> a billionaire. 
and he just acquires business. He's, and he just keeps buying, 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 getting bigger, bigger. He's, every year he gets bigger, 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 bigger. And uh, how many know that's a ministry? And he serves people. I know people can ask me, I need his name. <laughs> Please. Uh, but it's a blessing. Those who are successful in business, listen to me, it's, a, it's just as much a ministry to be successful in, in business and hold a job as it is to be a pastor or an evangelist. Does that make sense? But if we have to find our lane. I'm, I met this guy. He picked me up. It's Mark Dunphy's dad. This guy's like, he's telling me his life. He said, when I got saved, I gave my life to Christ. I was a prudential salesperson. But I said, God, everything I will do, I want to do for your glory. I thought about being a pastor, but I bet the Lord said, no, you're not called to pastor. So I just serve God. He's like 82. He like, just lost his wife last year. He says, all I know to do is serve God. I became in Maine, out of 2,900 prudential life insurance people, the number one rep in the nation. I said, man, imagine if he called in your house in Maine, he was closing. You were buying something. And so... Next thing you know, he's all over Maine, and he's made in charge of Maine. He kept being promoted, promoted, speaker. But he said, but as God blessed me, I just kept serving in the church, serving in the church. I'd put hours, and all his kids served the Lord. And, uh, but he has, he's had a life. This guy on follow-up, I said, that you do what now? He said, anyone who comes down here, I have a follow-up team of 30 people. I said, so what do you do? He said, we go to people's homes. And I have 12 lessons. And we, we, we go to their houses and we share Christ after they got saved. And we lead them to the baptism. We teach about giving. And it's on, on, it's, and it's on one-on-one. i got 30 people. And I've done it for years. The, old, the, the pastor said, this man has added hundreds to this church. And he said, now I've been, I did it for 35 years. The last 20, whatever, three, seven years, I've just served God. I put in at least 30 hours a week. And he told us about what he's given to the house, what he's done. I said, man, I, I'd like you to uh, come to my house and maybe change churches. I did say. But he was like gold. I mean, the man is like he's lived his entire life serving God in his business and he excelled. In the church, he's excelled. And uh, when I was preaching, I recognized him. I said, man, you got a pope in this church. Pope Dalton. That's his first name. Not last Dalton. But I just thought about this. Here's a man who gets it. It's all about giving your life away for God. He kept saying, you know what? And so what it is, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm a helper. Whatever I can do, and I've done it my whole life. I guarantee you, he stands before the, the, the judgment seat of Christ. He is getting a well done. There's something about him. He's so well done. I was just giving him. I said, Lord, have mercy. I said, you are not common. But thank God for a faithful life. Amen. And, uh, but let's keep going. So, uh, it's always based on, everybody say obedience. It's obeying what God asks you to do. It's obeying what God asks you to do. I know when I was in business and God began to speak to me about leaving business, this thought was on my mind that this, you, this is not a light thing. When God begins to nudge you, you can push against the nudge and make it go away to a degree. But I couldn't get it to go away. So, I had to follow God. And so um, we'll all stand. And then let's go to 2 uh, Corinthians 5.10. It says, um, for we must all appear, not some, all appear, before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one, everybody say each one, each one. may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now, I don't know about you. That motivates me. If I know i got to stand to go before Almighty God, the, uh, the loving Lord Jesus Christ, and I've got to give an account for my life, for each one, each one, you give an account for what did you do with your life for me. You know, that's one of the six principles. If Christians would live that way, they wouldn't be so lackadaisical about their life. 
It wouldn't be last days about church. It wouldn't be last days about calls, it be about prophetic words, about attitudes. You say, no, 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 my life is too important to God, and I'm going to make my life count. I am not going to back off being faithful to the house or being faithful to the call of God. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And the worst thing you do is look around at what other people are doing. Who cares? Who cares if someone wants to live their life at half mast? I'm not going to live my life at half mast. Half, half mast. I'm going to live it pedal to the metal. I, you know, really, when I, I figured this out early in my Christian walk, I'm going for it. You mean there's a contest? There's a race? Who could do more for God? Oh, that's what the race is about? Oh, I got this figured out. Well, I am going for it in Jesus' name. How can I cram... <laughs> he says, receive what? He says, you're going to receive. To, to, to receive. What, are we, well, what am I going to receive? What's due you? Hallelujah. You got to get this. There are rewards in heaven. Now, there's one scripture when it talks about the accountability we have before Jesus. Uh, we know he loves us. It's for rewards. Keep that in mind. He loves you. There'll be no shame. There are rewards. However, there's a proviso. Out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm going to read this slowly with emphasis. It says, let's start with verse 10. According to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But each one take heed. Everybody say, take heed. heed. Better watch how you build on it. I really believe he's talking about motives here more than anything else. Motives. It's amazing how you can camouflage yourself. You can be doing good works. You can even be busy. Look at that person. They're busy. Why? What's your motive? What is your motive? It's so key. Because we can camouflage our motives. That's why... You know, when we stand before God, we will not be able to camouflage a thing. You, no excuses will be accepted. And you, you, listen, you can't shuck and jive God. Well, Lord, let me tell you what's really going on here. <laughs> let me, he's, he's going to look at you. <laughs> what? It says, now, if, um, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones. Now, obviously, gold, silver, and precious stones are wonderful things. I believe what he's talking about is you have a motive that's pure, and you just want to honor God, and you want to please God, regardless of how it looks like. And you'll be tested if your motive really is for God, if you really want to obey God. That's where part of the suffering comes in. If you want to serve God... This man of God, Matt Ward, Pastor Matt Ward, we're exchanging notes. And his beginning was very much like our beginning. You leave the business world. He had come back to God. He was wayward. Come back to God. You step in. You think you're going to hear it. Wah, wah, hallelujah. Lights and angels peering. And you're going to just walk through the glory cloud as you fulfill the call of God. doesn't work that way. There are demons out there with baseball bats. <laughs> First thing you're then, what the, and you, what it is, is carnality in Christians, in the church, they're insecure, they're jealous, they're self-aggrandizers, they're self-promoters, and they want self-exaltation. Well, I don't see that. Oh, if you hang around much, it may not be so overt, but, um, but you watch people. It's amazing. It's amazing. But he went through hell and back starting that church. You know what? That man, 82-year-old, as we drove up, he just lauded every pastor, how wonderful they all were. Then I get the other story, side of the story. 
when Matt started, he began to be more successful than the previous pastor who was older. And things began to take off, and all of a sudden these things were happening. You'd think the pastor would give him accolades. It didn't happen that way. He started throwing knives and daggers. He started whatever he could do to hurt him. He said, I had to walk out in love. <laughs> Thank you for healing my back, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for helping me move forward. And if you're going to walk in ministry, you're going to be tested. Do you love Jesus enough to obey him no matter what and anything happens to you? Where all of a sudden there's lack. Well, God, you provide all my need. Where are you? Some things don't happen overnight. Some things like your healing care doesn't happen overnight. Like the promise of God, where's my job? Where's my healing? Where's my, where's my spouse? Where's this? And I promise you, if it's, it's in this fight that we get to want, to, we want to switch motives. It goes on. Can you stay sweet at home even though things are tough in the workplace? The Final Quest by Rick Joyner. It's a great book to read. He had an open vision for like a week. Went in this cabin. Every time we got into the cabin, the vision would take off again. Like a 3D, IMAX vision. And the, one of the things that was so telling to me was the reality of this whole thing about your motives, how God looks at motives. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why? Is it for your own glory? Or is it because the Lord told you to do in obedience to Him? And so He says, I'm in heaven, one of the latter part of it on this vision, and He's dressed in sackcloth, which represents humility. But he was watching these people of God that he recognized. He didn't say their names, but he mentioned one person you could tell to me was Martin Luther King. Not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther. He didn't say it. But he said, when you see in heaven, people have different rewards. And one of the rewards is the anointing you carry on your life. The level of anointing. So people can just look at you and they know the level of anointing. He said, some people... I said, what are you doing here? You're number one. You're on the ground floor. Why? You know, you're a great man. You did all these things. Why are you on the first level? He said, because the Lord judged me because I did not treat my wife correctly. And I hurt her. Therefore, the things I did, it was like when I passed through the fire, the next verse says, it's either gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Wood, hay, stubble burns. What's happening there? It's not condemnation, but what you've done will go through the fire. He met another man who was a contemporary, had a worldwide ministry, cover the earth. He was on television. He, was, he didn't mention the name. He said he had books. He had seminars. He was a known name. He was on level one. He went up to him and said, what are you doing on level one? He said, I built a great ministry and I was called of God. But I would never promote those around me. I tend to use young people around me to step on them and to give myself a higher position. And because the way I treated people in my ministry and how I got, yes, I had a huge ministry. Yes, I had a huge impact. But the way I treated others cost me so much. The reward I would have received I didn't. That kind of brings it down to one thing. Walk softly before God. It's not the biggest ministry or the most famous ministry that wins. In fact, he said he looked at the greatest seats in heaven. Mostly were women. Your intercessors, the people that prayed things to happen. Someone else acted out where someone else paved the way in the spirit. Does that make sense? You know, God's not stupid. He sees exactly what's going on. He reads the whole thing. And so we should want gold, silver, precious stones. It's pureness of heart, pureness of motive. And we have to keep checking ourselves because you can be good one day but start going sideways the next does that make sense? That's why it's so important to live a fasted life. You know, don't let your body eat everything it wants to. 
Go on periods of fast where you just cut back. That's why it's good to seek the face of God. Humble yourself to pray. We're going to do some all-night prayers coming up. We're doing some other prayer. I am, you, I'm coming another schedule for a month of May. We're going to do some praying and fasting. Well, I don't want to do that. You have to do whatever you want to do. But I know from my own life, I want more of God. I want to seek the face of God. I want God to do a work in me, through me. And I want to reach up to everything he has. And I want it for this body of believers. I want so much. Excel anything I could have done. That's my heart. Do bigger things. That's why I celebrate Daniel the toy. I got other pastors get jealous because he's moving. He's only 22. No, Lord, that. Quit try, who cares? It, listen, it doesn't matter. In God's economy, it just it doesn't matter. What matters is your heart's right and that you have a, a heart to serve others and to lift others and celebrate their success. Does that make sense in ministry? That's why people always want to tell me, I've had people come to me, Pastor, we can make your name great. Right off, that's a turn off. Now with this, we can get you, I've been offered, I've been offered, we can put you in front of this, you can have your own mass crusade, we can do this, we can put this and this. You know, I told that person after you get it all done, and, and he does it for the mysteries. I said, you know what, that's a turn off for me. He said, what do you mean? That's not my joy. My joy is letting other people do that. My heart is to see the body of Christ capture what's in them and watch them excel. Does that make sense? I'm not saying if God tells me I want you to do a mass crusade, I've got to obey God. But the mass crusade, the photo up, are you serious? I mean, people will do, I, I've seen it. Sometimes they got this giant photo and they, were, they got a Bible and they got this crowd. It's like, it, it, it really, you know, I, you know, I think about, you know, I think about people like Anna. I was studying Anna, the prophetess. Just a little paragraph about her. You know, she's like 86 or something. 84, I think it was. She had been widowed for 84 years. Well, before that was married, seven. So do the math. She'd be married back then, she was 50. She's in her hundreds, 105, 10, 15. She said, she served God. Get these words. She served God with fasting and prayer 80 some years in the temple every day. And she said, She's waiting for the promised Messiah. And when she saw him, she immediately knew because she was a woman of the Spirit, went right to the same. This, this, is, this is what is going to free Israel. I've been praying for him. I've been praying for him. Now, in the economy of the world, she's a widow. She has little social status and influence. The world would maybe discount her as a purple person of little influence. <laughs> but in heaven, who is she? I guarantee you, you'll know Anna in heaven. Come meet Anna. Seriously. And so it's, uh, she's not here, but I, 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 we have people like Lisa Artis. She'd be upset if I talked about her. Maybe she's watching. I'll try to keep it small, otherwise she'll get upset with me. But I watch Lisa. I won't say what she does because I'm not allowed to. But she serves in this house. She's at prayer. She gives her heart for God. I watch her. She's humble. She doesn't want to laud herself. She doesn't toot her own horn. In fact, if you try to toot her horn, she'll put a sock in your horn so you won't be heard. <laughs> she just says, I don't want to be known. I just want to be a uh, stealth. And it's refreshing. It's like God's got some great things. I mean, it's like God. Awesome. So listen, let's finish reading it. He said, each one's uh, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. 
because it will be revealed by fire. I mean, like, you cannot, I mean, the, God's going to scrutinize what we do intensely. There'll be no hidden agenda. It'll all be known before Almighty God and ourselves. And so, what's our response? Our response is, God, I want to obey you in everything I know to do. I want to be obedient to you. I don't want to treat life haphazardly. I don't want to be lazy in my following you. I want to stir my heart up to follow you. I want to seek after your face. I want to be a man, a woman of God. I want to be one that says that I, I listen to you and I fulfill what you call me to do. And we each have a different walk. But if you know you're being watched, you know I'm being watched. And what I do is recorded. Is recorded. It's being recorded. Well, then you have a different, uh, it shouldn't be this way, but sometimes in the workforce, if, if a boss comes and watches you, you give it 100%. Sometimes the boss can be away, people get on their internet, start playing games. You got to always inspect what you expect, folks. Just take a tour through the office. It's free. Uh, so it, 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 it has to do, the, and this First Corinthians 3 has nothing to do with your salvation. You're born again. You, you are born again. You have Jesus within you. It has to do with rewards. It has to, it has to do with recognizing what you've done and can God give you more. Have you been faithful in a little so he can give you much. So, I don't know about you, but it, does, that, does that excite you? It excites me because it, it, it lets me know nothing is insignificant. So if you work in the back there taking care of children, God notes it. Whatever you do, it seems like, the, well, I'm praying. No one knows I'm praying. I'm praying all these hours. They want to see. God sees it. God sees it. And so we've got to keep our motives pure. And it says here, uh, Verse 14, if anyone's work which he has built on endures, he'll receive a reward. There's something about a work that endures. King James says abides. I mean that what are you doing that when you die, the effect of what you've done is going to keep on going? It's like you've impacted someone's life. You've done something for the ministry that causes people to keep moving. It's called a legacy. I believe the work of God, you should leave a legacy. Your life should be a legacy for others to follow what you've done. So it's, it's all thinking in terms of eternity, in terms of pleasing God, and in terms of standing before this judgment seat of Christ. I want to hear well done, not oh, oh, oh well. Oh well, uh, enter into the joy of the Lord. Okay. And we know this, because I'll, I'll close with this, is in Matthew 25, if you read that through 11 through 30, um, he speaks about the whole five talents, or four, four, 14 through um, 36. He talks about five talents, two talents, one talent. And he says of the five, when he, he returns to check up on what they did with what they received. Now, some people around here, you have multiple talents. Amen. You sing. You do business. You're sharp. I mean, some people, they got a lot of, a lot of gifts. They're administrative. I mean, there's a lot of things that you've been, you've been given. It's the absolute truth. Some, some people, I said, well, when they're passing out... I'll tell you a person's like that. That is um, Ted Shellsworth Jr. I watched him preach. He leads a whole music thing for one hour. Then he gets up and preaches like a man from another world. Then he flows in the gifts. Plus his new bookstore, he's got a plethora of books. Plus he's gone. Now that's a, I said, now that's a five-talent man. But guess what? He's using all five talents. 
I mean, that, that, that man is not letting anything get back. And he's very humble about it, not trying to put anything airs. He just wants to work for God and get the job done. Amen? So, but we each have different levels. We're given either five, two, but don't get upset about it. Just say, just be at peace. Amen? And whatever God gave you, like, if not everyone's made to sing. Get over it. Uh, not everyone's made to be a pastor. Get over it. There's tons to do. Everyone's made to pray. Everyone's made to serve. I mean, there's tons of, you know, your, your, your position, it doesn't matter to God. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons I didn't want to take this job, because God said, I'll judge you with a higher standard. Oh, great. Praise God. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I want to get beamed up to heaven. Okay, how am I doing? Why do I need to change? But no, I get <laughs> You, you, can, you can get that down here by the Holy Ghost. And so we have to decide that, you know, God, um, I, I, what, what's the difference about getting this principle about eternal judgment? You know what it gets to me? It changes how I handle my life. I've got to get very serious. I can't play. I can't get lazy on God. I've got to be fervent. And, 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 and let me tell you something I've got to do to myself. I've got to, I've got to be accountable to me, meaning I've got to judge me. You know, the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. I've got to, 1 Corinthians 11, I've got to judge myself. We, you know, we always need to pull away. How am I doing? I need to up this. I need to stop that. You know, make, make an assessment. Yes. Don't wait for the great throne. Of, don't wait for the judgment seat of Christ. You be your own judge. Move stuff around. Cut stuff thing, cut some stuff off. Am I moving in the right direction? And so we've got to do these things if, and, and avoid being sloppy. But you know what? You, lo- you, you, you talk about the eternal judgment, it, it forces you, I've got to live for eternity. And when I hear about the, the great lake of fire, I want to live for souls. I want to see, I don't want anyone going to the great lake of fire. I don't want anyone going to hell. And so you just kind of judge your life and you, you do what Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I'll end with this. I have fought a good fight. I want to be able to say that. Everybody say, I fought a good fight. Say this. I have finished the race. Man, everything laid before me, I did it. And I have, and I have um, kept the faith. You see, he, I mean, these are great statements. I mean, this is a, this is a man who, who said, listen, I'm ready for the judgment seat of Christ. I can stand there with clear conscience because everything he gave me to do, I did. And he says, and I love what he says because he talks about the reward. He says, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the law, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. There's a reward coming to me. And I know it's mine. I always think about what can you give God when you get to heaven? It said the 12 elders would give their crowns to him. What do I have? You can't take up off your robe. That's indecent. <laughs> what are you going to give him? Thank God you could give him a crown. Whatever he crowns you with, he said, they cast him down. They said, listen, I was given it, but I want to give it to you. I got something of value. That's all I got. But to show my love to you, I want to give it to you. And really, it should be the motive of everything we do. God, out of my love for you, I want to serve you. I want to live for over there, not here. I just want to have my life engaged. That this thing about eternity, I'm living it now. I'm living my eternal life now. With Jesus. I simply cross over when I'm before him. But every one of us, I'm looking at everyone including me, you will one day stand by yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account for how you lived your life. It's for rewards now. But I believe that the scripture says that Jesus wipes away all tears from their eyes. What they're crying about. 
what they could have had, what they should have had, what was, what was really in their, in their destiny. Amen? So in these last days, we have to pay attention. We have to learn to listen. Don't let pride get in there. Don't buck up. Someone brings a little bit of information maybe you don't like to hear. Take it to God. Lord, is this what you're talking to me about? Do I need to shed something? Do I make a shift, a change? But I promise you, you get open to God, you listen to God, you, and you seek his face, you will run your race. You'll be able to say with Paul, I'll run my course. I'll finish my course. I've run my race. I've kept the faith. Amen. Amen. I prophesy to everyone here today in Jesus' name that you will run your race. You will finish your course. You will keep the faith. You will receive a crown of righteousness. Actually, there are four other crowns. But you're going to receive everything God has for you. You will not come behind in one good thing. I speak it over you. You're going to be yielded to the Holy Ghost. You will not make quick decisions. You will listen to God. God will speak to you. And you will hit the mark in Jesus' mighty name. And great will be your joy. And great shall be your reward in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God says these six things, principles, are fundamental to get the foundation so you can grow an edifice to the glory of God. And so we take these lessons to heart. But the last lesson I like the best because it kind of is kind of a little bit, uh, how should I put it? It shakes any flakiness. I can't live a flaky life. I can't live a life at half-mast. I've got to live a life that's hot for God. I'm going for it. No matter what, I'm going to fulfill the call. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today that you watch us from heaven, that you see us here, even on a Wednesday night. And with this message, Lord, we want to be a people of total, radical, sold-outness, to Jesus Christ and His purpose. Then, Lord, we have one shot at this life. None of us get to touch rewind. We can only move forward. But, Lord, where we have missed it, where we have failed, Lord, we repent and we thank You forgive us. But the days to come, the years to come, as we draw near to the end of the age, we want to be counted worthy. We want to multiply that which You've given us. We want to use our lives to impact this world for Jesus Christ. We want to be filled up with you. We want the gifts of the Holy Ghost to operate within us. And we want that anointing to increase. That, Father, we have one heart and mind. That is to glorify you in all we do. Receive your glory. But, Lord, we want to have our motives pure. Everything we want to do, we want to have our hearts pure, pure as gold. We want to have our motives strong as silver that we will last in everything we do, that the works we do will last because there's no corruption in our works. It's all for Jesus and it's all for the perpetuity of the gospel to keep moving forward always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here I am, Lord. That's what we got to say. Here I am. It's, it's me, God. It's just, just use my life for your glory. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Hallelujah. Now, I feel led to do this. Um, if you're uncomfortable with it, you don't have to move. If you're comfortable with it, you can move. I, I just have not done this in a long time. But if you're here, I just want you to stand, out of your, stand up out of your seat. And if, I just want us to gather around this altar as a group of people and just give our lives to Christ afresh tonight. And I believe he's got his anointing upon you. So just stand up quickly and come forward and we'll close. Just a couple minutes. He said, well, just just come as close as you can. Just bunch up. Bonnie, if you need to, you can sit on the stair. You okay? You don't have to. It's whatever, it's whatever you want to do. Oh, Jesus. 
as we gather around this, this, it's the altar of God. I want you to look at this as an altar, because it is an altar. And I just want you to close your eyes a minute. I want you to, I want you to see Jesus, the lover of your soul. I want you to see the one who paid the price for you to be free from all sin, all death. And hell is not your home anymore. If you're born of the Spirit, you're not destined to hell. You're destined to heaven. You have an assurance. And so we come before God because we need to hear what He's saying. We need to be yielded to His leading. And we need to be willing to obey in everything He asks of us. And God always calls us up higher. And it's not more work necessarily, busyness is not really the key. The key is our heart before God. For some of us, it means more time with God, more prayer, more seeking Him. For some of us, it means just to get up and become a more diligent student of the Word. For some of us, it means we need to give more than we've been giving sacrificially for others in our time and our talent, our energy. Whatever it all the combination is, it's all unique, but God sees it all. But let's just lift up our hands to heaven. And let's just say these words. Say, oh God, you are my Father. I am born again by your Holy Spirit. Today I stand before you, covered with the blood of Christ, made righteous through Jesus. And I boldly ask you that you would show me clearly all you've called me to do. I willingly open up my heart for you to search me. Shine the light of your word and the light of the Holy Spirit. Point out things that need to go. Speak to me about what I need to do. And Lord, I believe that you've called me to increase and to grow in my maturity with you. And I'm asking you for the supernatural empowerment of the Holy Ghost to grow me up, to be mighty for you, to be fruitful for you, to be bold for you, to be a soul winner for you, to be a carrier of your anointing, to undo the weights of hell of this generation. I'm yours, Lord. I give my life to you. I dedicate my life to you. I belong to you. Use my life for your glory. Come, Holy Spirit. Saturate me. Send your fire upon me. And send me out to do your work in Jesus' mighty name. And I believe when I meet you face to face, you will say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So, Lord, I run for that day till I meet you face to face. But until that day, thank you for your divine empowerment and the increase of heaven's glory upon my life. More and more, more and more to the glory of the Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Hotola mama rodozi ki da baba rozi ki dia. Ojola borodo zi ki da baba rozi dia da kadaya. Ye jela mama rodozi ala kadaya dio lo kodoya. A jela borosi ki da barana ki da barana kadaya. A jela barosi ki dia la kadaya. For the Lord would say, you become behind in no good thing as you set me before you, as you set my calling before your life. And as you reach up to me, saith the Lord, I will visit you. I will meet you. I shall empower you. I shall give you everything that you need to fulfill the call that's on your life. And direction shall come and you will know. And you will step into that increase that I have prepared for you.
And surely the presence of my spirit shall be upon you in greater and greater manifestation. And there'll be a light about you. And there'll be a joy about you. And the strength of heaven shall be in your spirit. And you shall walk boldly. And you shall walk with power. And great shall be the glory that shall rest upon your life. As you don't shrink back from what I'm asking you to do. But boldly run this race I've called you to run. And you will see the presence of my angels, of my spirit, and signs and wonders shall be in your life, says the Lord. So walk before me. Hear what I'm saying. Walk before me. Keep me in the forefront of your life. And I shall surely promote, and I shall surely equip, and I shall surely give you all you need, says the Lord your God. For it's been given to you, already yours according to the Scriptures, that your inheritance has been already imparted to you, but you will receive that which has been given, and you walk in the fullness of it. Hallelujah! 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 You know, I just want to say this. Your maturity in Christ, we're all growing, but your maturity in Christ can be accelerated as you press in and say, God, I want to be used in a greater way. I am going to go for it. That's just got to be inside your spirit. I'm going for it. Whatever I can, way I can grow my life, I'm going for it. And to go for it, you got to stretch yourself. When things come out, can you do this? Can you do that? Follow by the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost boy talk to you. But if you, if you get a witness to go, just, just, just stretch yourself. Do things you didn't do before. In your time alone with God, stretch yourself. In your time of study, stretch yourself. In prayer meetings, stretch yourself. Just stretch yourself. Just ask God to help you, and He will. He'll give you grace on you. You can do it by, I tell you, uh, it's like you can start off in the flesh, but you end up in the Spirit, and it becomes easy. Really, there's an ease to it. Yete la ma ma so. Let me tell you, the hand of God, I see so many, the hand of God is on you. The hand of God is on you. I tell you, people will be leaving here to do works for God around the earth. They will. They will come. Just, you'll be touched. You'll go. The Lord said, said, said to me, the people will be leaving and coming, fulfilling what God put on their heart to do. We don't hold on to people here. Just whatever God tells you to do, we get behind you. Sister Bonnie, you're not done yet. No, no, I'm going to tell you this. You're not done. God's going to reverse this thing in your body. There's gold in you. And God's going to extend your years. In Jesus' name. This thing is waiting. It's like, uh, it's waning. It's waning. That's the right word. It's just, it's dissolving. Yeah, it's happening. Lord, just continue that work in her. By that anointing. If you undo every work, and she's going to be the preacher of the gospel. Joanna, you're stepping out to stretch yourself financially, temporally, in every way. But heaven says, I see your act of faith, and I will meet you there. And the clarity for the next step shall be given you, says the Lord. You have a vision for your future. You'll come back with a knowing that shall be part of your life, and you shall fulfill it. In Jesus' name. Man, I could speak to so many. Shalmei, I mean, you got, oh, there's a woman who could give many talents. Lord, in the name of Jesus, it's as the roots go deeper, the fruit gets bigger. And great shall be the influence, and great shall be the power, and great shall be the flow of the Holy Ghost upon your life. The gifts of the Spirit begin to flow through you. I'm seeing word of knowledge, word of wisdom in a manifestation like you've never seen. Lord, touch it with your fire. <laughs> line upon line, precept upon precept. It says, Lord, I'm building, building, building in you and preparing you for that which I've called you to. You'll step over and you'll step into it and it will be a blessing for the fulfillment of the glory of God upon your life comes through obedience. Lord, fresh fire upon them in Jesus' name. Come here. In the name of Jesus. 
What the devil meant for bad, God's causing you to make it for good in Jesus' name. You're going to be a firebrand for the kingdom of God. You are going to be an instigator for the greatness of God. I promise you this. Many are going to follow your lead because, Lord, I made you a leader. You're an influencer. People will follow what you say. They will go with you. But you're going to lead many out of darkness into the light. In Jesus' name, fire the Holy Ghost on your life. He's going to use you, sis. He's going to use you. I've been watching. You've been taking it in. Lord, even me. Yes, you. Fire on you. Jesus' name, Azamamaya. Dr. John, Dr. Victoria, it's building. You feel momentum. It's building. It's building. Even within you, the very calling of God is coming to fruition. All He put in you is growing. It's growing. The tree is growing, and so is the fruit. And as you grow, tap into the deeper anointing. God's still got a greater anointing. There's a greater flow. There's a greater flow. He's putting it on you. A greater anointing. A greater wisdom. A greater fire. There's more. Fire! More! 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 Azebur Nisiela. Yejele Babara Naza. Ajala Mamara Daza. Joyce is going to use you these last days. Get ready. Fire on your ministry in your life. Hatala Mamara Dizio. Ujala Mamara Dazia. Abaraba. Bruce, Cynthia, come here. In the name, Lord, you're sending him out as arrows shot from the bow of God. Straight and true. Quick. Fast. Fast work should be done. Quicker than the natural would imagine to be, but you shall see it. As you release everything to me, I'm going to release everything to you. <laughs> a divine flow of finances and supply, a divine increase of the flow of the gifts. And truly, your gift will make room for you. So, Lord, anoint them for the task, anoint them for the work, flood them with everything they need. And let them run with fire. Fire. Hasebo. Ujile mamaradi alaki alokodo ziki alakadaya. For the Lord says to you, Stephanie, you've not seen nothing yet. Preparation, preparation for what lies ahead. Preparation for all that I've called you to. Stay close. Karusiki de babaridia. Ujile mamahata. Jita bahaza. Fire of heaven. Oh, yes. The Lord's calling you up to leadership. There's more. I want to just stop right there. I'm just going to say, I just hear the word more. <laughs> yep. You know it. Not news. Now, Lord, let there be an action. An anointing and a grace to step out into what you called her to. Azabaruni Sikiala, Kazakoro Zikiala, Ajala Kado Sikia. The gift of God within your heart shall expand and shall grow. Uzimuru Zikidiala Kadaya, Ajila Kadi Zikiolo Kodo Zikia. You can step out. There's just, I just sense the Lord just saying, as you keep taking your steps, there's another step of influence is going to give you. Greater influence is coming. Anointing shall, shall follow that obedient step and the next step and the next step. God will give to you far more than what the world promised you. Watch what He does. You'll come to that day and say, It's so much better to follow God than the world. Lord, let the anointing be on my brother right now. Push him over, Lord, where he needs to always be pushing for you. More. Let every weight and every concern be lifted in Jesus' name. 
May you step into the free fullness of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Man, I feel the anointing on you. Woo! Wow. You know, it's a holy thing right here. I don't have to pray for you, but there's a holy thing. It's you and Jesus. It's a holy thing. Precious thing. It's a mighty thing. I'm telling you what, you're stepping into it. You're stepping into it. Even going to Zambia, you're stepping into it. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Jesse, you're ready. Greater anointing. Gifts of God flowing out of you. Maturity in the spirit beyond your years in Jesus' name. Bring that sister. That's your aunt? In Spanish? Okay. For, uh, fuego. Not fuego. Fuego. Zicaraba. Fuego más. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Fuego más. Fuego más. Yes. You know, Sister Celeste, you're going to see more things. God is downloading you. There's going to be an increase of the download. You're an Anna. The Bible says she was a prophet because she could see into the future. But you're stepping into that very prophetic office that God has put you on. It's on you. It's on you. Zamorosikia. And the Lord's going to call you to speak out what He gives you. Even in prophetic utterances, you're going to be speaking out in Jesus' name. Now, I know she's one of the Spirit. So you, she's, she, she's going to judge my prophetic word right now. <laughs> but in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus. Everyone here today. Gregory, come here. Gregory Griffith. Man, greatly loved by God. I just sense the Lord says he sees all the issues. And sometimes it gets a little heavy, pushing through all the things. They're simultaneous. It's like simultaneous. I say, Lord, I need some, I need a breakthrough in this thing. The Lord said, this is going to lift. And you're going to be released to run for heaven like you've never run. And your influence is going to be supernatural. It's going to touch many lives. And it's unique. It's like a unique calling, a unique flow that you're going to go with. It's going to be in the Holy Ghost. It's going to be by the anointing. In Jesus' name. So, Lord, I just release that on his life. Every issue. I thank you, Lord. There's a lifting. A lifting! And they're breaking free. And a fresh oil on his life. That he gets in that secret place with you. Fresh fire. Fresh anointing to run. The later laps of his life. In Jesus' name. I mean it without just saying it. The Lord say it. Your best days are yet to come. Really. Wicked Taporusikia. Sean, raise your hands. Just keep pressing in the lane you're in. Stay in your lane. Stay yielded. Just say, God, use me where I am. Your fruitfulness is the vision of heavens to your life. I mean, it's like an affirmation. Just stay in that flow. It's going to increase. I speak it over you. A divine increase of that flow. A divine prophetic anointing on you. You'll speak in the, these young men's lives. 
I just speak the grace of God. I speak fire. Touch him, Jesus, with your fire. In Jesus' name. Sean, raise your hands. God's going to use you. I know you're quiet on the outside, but you're loud on the inside. Lord, use this man for the kingdom of God. There's going to be a new anointing on you, the latter part of 2022, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of fire. Fred and company, you too. You've come through much stuff, a lot of challenges. Raise your hands. The passion for God and your passion for the things of the Spirit are going to be released. You're going to be able to walk it out and not just talk it out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hasaborenisi kietukosi. Zikuru zikisi kadaya. Jila barasa kiala kadaza kadaya. God. Zina muriti kita babaruzi titi. Zata buruzi kita baranasa. Jita buruzi kiti ziki yolo kuduya. We be may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God has a morning for you, my sister. Lord, I don't understand this or that. No, God's got that plan. Give it to him. Tata risi ki zaburanasi kieta baradaya. Let the touch of heaven be on your life. Fire on the anointing of God on your life. Well, it's... I just sense the love of God embracing every single one of you here tonight. I just, I just know it. He's just doing it. He's just doing it. You're going to run for Him. Run. You too, in the name of Jesus. You're going to be known as a dynamic duo. You know that? You're going to be, when the, when the devil's trying to separate you, you're going to flow as one. You have the same heart, the same vision, the same mind, the same spirit. Speak a, a oneness on your walk with God, with each other. Use them, Jesus, for your glory. The fire of heaven on you. Fulfill the call of God on you. Fresh anointing. Fresh fire. Let's just lift our hands to heaven. Father, we thank you today. You are the mighty God. There's none like you. And Father, we just want to walk in your presence. We want to walk sensitive to everything you're speaking. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the increase in our lives of your anointing, of your power, of your gifts. But Lord, here we are. Send us. Use us. Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. I'll go for you. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord, fill me. Here I am, Lord, send me. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, we love you. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, we love you. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Fill me. Use my life, Lord, for Thee. I'm Yours, Lord. I'm not mine. I'm Yours, Lord. I give You my life. 
Oh God, oh God, oh God. Je y a la bozoto, jeti. Il y a l'ozoto, joto. Et j'ai à la bamba, jeti. Il y a l'ozoto, jolo. Oh, 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 jo. Pour y aller, y aller. Oh, 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 such a rest in flowing with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 oh. So you got a word? I thought so. Give me the microphone, please. Ask for beer, for no, there is no error on the language. Yeah, but could I you help uh, beer just trans? Oh, do you have another microphone? Is okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, the day before yesterday, I wake up and I have a vision that I, I was. That she was setting a table with like a, a linen fine cloth. Linen. Fine, fine linen. linen. And, and, and at the end, there was a big pot of and, uh, like a big container, and meat was being cooked in it. I know. And this pastor that she knows. Ele estava entrando gás e comendo he was carne sticking crua. the fork in there and eating the raw meat. Yeah. Yeah, eu falei, não come, a carne tá crua. And she told him, man, don't eat it, the meat is raw. Yeah, but when I get out there, when she woke up, I, eu tava disturbed because I saw, and durante o dia, quando fui te buscar, and throughout the day when she was picking me up from work, Deus falou comigo. The Lord spoke to her about o que eu vi. About her dream. Que that's why I'm talking now because the word for that is because dela that she uh, told about honor. The Lord told two things is gonna be judged in the church before He's come. How a gente trata o sagrado? How we treat the sacred things? Mm. And um, how uh, the secret things? And sexual immorality in the church. Mm. They're going to be judged. Because when I went to pick up beer, he told me, it's just like the sons of Eli. Mm. The two sins, que, dois, uh, pecados que eles tinham, the two sins they eles had, não honravam o sagrado. They didn't honor what was sacred. E they practiced immorality in the temple. For us, it's the church. She wasn't going to say anything. But, uh, no, that's really right on. I think we need to um, understand, judge ourselves. He said, no, but it's not honoring the things that are sacred to God. That's what Eli's son did. And then there was immorality. And immorality can have different phases. If it's, yeah. in, if it's pornography, yeah. if it's wrong um, affections that are yeah. misplaced, it doesn't have to be necessarily out and out physical adultery. It's all the thing that pollutes, yes. and the and the world is just hosing sewer water into people's lives. They just want to hose it, and we've got to be. No, I'm not. I'm, you got to shut yourself off. Say no. That, that that anointing, it'll all bounce off. Me. I'm not going to go there. The Bible says, stay far away from the door of temptation. We have its relationships, uh, maybe uh, other people that are not yeah. the same standard. We love them, but we can't get that close because yes. their standards are not our standards. 
And when you get, when your spirit says, don't do that, just, you got to, you got to distance yourself from it. Like literally, I mean, you got to say, I'm not going to, and I want to say something about the internet. The social media is the greatest uh, enemy to the souls of the young. And it's, it's got, uh, I was talking with my son dealing with the youth. He said, Dad, the greatest perpetrator of evil is the social media. It, it feeds them. Um, and also, it, 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 it dwarfs them in one sense, socially, relationally-wise. But then it infuses them. And they, go de- they get dependent. And it's like a drug. Just like a drug. So we need the parents to understand what's going on. And we need to be passing out dumb phones. I mean, just dumb phones. Forget it. You can't see everything. This, this phone, I can call you for safety. You can call me. But parents, we can't. But I know what you're saying. And the more that we can step into the purity of God with our lives and the presence of God, honoring what's his, the greater the glory, the greater the presence. Yeah, because I think that the center of the God show was the the fine line and lean. The fine linen on the table. Because that's what can come. Gloria vai vem. Glory will come. But the yeah. fine linen meant glory. Well, he said he'd come for a spotless bride. And he said, it's like I believe that we are the last generation. I fully believe it. And so we have to be very purposeful about our walk. And we got to get ruthless. Jesus said, if your right hand offends, you cut it off. If your left foot offends, I mean, he just like, you got to get radical. But at the same time, the joy of knowing his presence is like, I was hit at a camp meeting. I won't get into it, but it's it like, I've never been hit like that in I don't know how long. It's just immobilized for an hour. But we want that, just like the power so strong that people cannot, when they walk out of here, they're not the same. And they're not legalistic, they're not religious, they're, they're free, but bold and clean. And uh, say, Lord, keep me clean and keep me close to you. That's really good. Thank you. Now listen, I want to just say this to you and other people. If you've got a prophetic word, I just finished reading the first book of the trilogy that Brother Ted Shuttlesworth is writing. I want to get it in here. Read it. It's got illumination about the gifts like I've never seen before. But one of the things he said, we need to have the gifts operate, tongues interpretation, has been shut down in the church because, quote, of error. We see error, we shut it down. But rather have some error than no gifts. Does that make sense? So if you have a word in the service, and Sister Celeste, you need to move like this. I need a prophetic word, not necessarily sharing a vision. A prof- like when we go in the services, you got a, you got a word. Then just come forward. If I know you by the Spirit, well, I'll let you go. If I don't know you, I'll say, give me the word first. Tell me what the, <laughs> tell me what the Lord told you. And then I'll, okay, go for it. And um, because a word from the Lord always lifts the service. A word from man brings it down. So we got to judge it. But that's okay. I'd rather have mistakes. But he was saying, it's, it's like if you dishonor the gifts, then God backs off. But the more you honor the gifts and make a demand on them, the more they'll flow. But we must have the gifts in these last days. It's not an option. We must have them. Not just in the church, within ourselves. It has to flow. So how many would like that book? Well, I'm going to order. Are they in the bookstore? But I just finished reading it. Just got so stirred up. But let's, uh, we are dismissed. If you're staying, it's because you want to stay. If you want prayer, uh, Pastor William Flossie out there, if you need prayer, if you want me to pray for you, my wife, we'll, we will, we will, we'll pray for you. I want to pray for Sean and Kelly, though, before you go. But you're dismissed. Hug at least three people in Jesus.